Hey everyone, it's Jessie. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. So I haven't been able to get up as many videos as I wanted to the last few weeks. There's just been a lot going on with the holidays, and I also work a full-time job, and I was trying to put in overtime. And I've never mentioned this on my channel, but I deal with chronic pain. The last few weeks have been pretty tough, and if I overdo it, the pain is even worse. So between that and um, the exhaustion that I have, it's been pretty difficult. However, now that the holidays, things are slowing down, I'm hoping that my body will recoup a little bit. <laughs> and um, I'm going to be working on getting up some more videos for you guys. Okay, so for this video, I wanted to share with you a project that I started. I mentioned it a while back that it was a project, project I wanted to work on. And I finally started it. I believe I started it on Christmas Day. And uh, we celebrated our Christmas with my son on Christmas Eve. He's here visiting from the Navy. So it's, it's just been wonderful to see him. So the project that I am working on is the Granny Pop Pullover by MJ's Off the Hook Designs. So this is what it looks like. That's such a beautiful sweater. I'm going to link this. Um, she has a video tutorial on this sweater also. So I'm going to link that below if you're interested in making this sweater. The yarn that's used for this sweater is Mary Maxim Prism yarn. And I made another sweater, a V-neck granny pop V-neck sweater of MJ's Off the Hook Designs uh, not long ago. I can link that video here if you want to see what that, how that turned out. That's also using Mary Maxim Prism yarn, but it was in a different colorway. Now, here is what it looks like. Look at those beautiful colors. This is a light three weight. It is 100% acrylic, 290 yards, made in Turkey. And the colorway is Water's Edge. Look at this. Oh, it's gorgeous. And you guys know how I love blues and browns. It's It's got different shades of blue, different shades of browns and tans, and then it goes into like a cream and then a white. And it's gorgeous. So this is used for the body of the sweater and the arms of the sweater and then for the the collar of the sweater and then the like cuff cuffs of the sleeves and then the ribbing at the bottom of the sweater it's all in this this yarn which is mary maxim mellow spun dk now this is also a light three weights and 284 yards, 100% acrylic, and in the color cream. So it's very nice. It's a very soft yarn. Both of these I find are really soft and they go nice together. Okay, so this is how far I am. Let's see if I can stand up and show you here. I've gotten actually down to my hips here now. So I got quite a ways on this sweater. I really love the, the collar here, the ribbing up here. Very nice. And once I work up the body at the bottom, I'll be doing a little bit of ribbing here. And then after that, I will move on to the sleeves. And it's very possible I'm going to decrease the sleeves a little like I did in the V-neck pullover or V-neck sweater. Just because I don't want it to... To balloon out way too much i don't i don't really like that i don't mind if it does a little bit but so i am going to be working on that there's one thing that i don't know if i like right now about the sweater and i'm trying to i'm debating if i should frog it and start the body over but i got so far so i'm not sure what to do all right so in michelle Michelle at MJ's Off the Hook Designs, in her video when she's showing you how to make the sweater, she explains if you make it in just a solid color, the entire sweater, that when you're making the body part of the sweater, instead of going in a circle, 
Like, here, let's show you. So, here's the body. So, instead of going in a circle all the way around, you get to, like, the side of the sweater. And she has you turn, chain and turn. And then once you get back there, you chain and turn. And if you do that, hopefully I'm explaining this okay. But if you do that, when you, you chain and you turn, then the seam of your sweater is going to be down the side. So here's, here we go. So here's the sleeve and the seam would be down the side. So you wouldn't be able to see it very much. Now in the variegated yarn, which is what I'm using, she suggests not to turn it like that because if you do, you'll have big chunks of color. So you'd have a big chunk of blue, a big chunk of brown or white. But if you like that, you can do that. Or if you want the rolls to kind of switch color more often, like the sweater here is showing, instead of turning, you would just go work it in continuous rounds. So just in a circle, which is what I've been doing with the sweater. Now, what happens when you do a continuous round is the seam is not going to show just down the side or be just down the side of the sweater anymore. The seam is going to go. Let me show you. This is the seam. So as you can see, let's bring it up closer. So as you can see, the the where you join at the end of the round, it keeps switching every row. So it makes this diagonal seam. In Michelle's video, she, she said with the variegated yarn, it wouldn't be as noticeable, but and maybe it's not, but to me it's noticeable and I know I'm pointing it out, so it's going to be noticeable to you too, but look at that. And now that I see it on camera, I mean, do you see that? See how it's kind of like, it looks off going down. I'm not liking that. I don't really like that it's that noticeable to me. Oh, so I'm so tempted to take it all out. What are your thoughts? What would you guys do if you were working on this beautiful sweater and you notice that? Would you leave it and hope it's not as noticeable as it is to yourself? <laughs> or would you frog it and change it up. I mean, I guess if I turned it the other direction, it would just be on the back and then the front would be fine. I don't know, you guys. It's. It, I think it will drive me crazy. So, just wondering your thoughts. What would you guys do? And I'm also wondering your opinion on some other things. So, I sometimes like to have more than one project going. Because if I, let's say I have this one going, well, I do have this one going, but this project I'm working on, if I get, you know, a little bored with it and I want to work on something else and I have another project to go to and I can go back and forth if I get bored. So I am thinking of, I'm trying to figure out what I should work on next. And there's so many things that I do want to work on. Now, one thing I thought of working on is so I have all this Hobby Lobby clearance yarn that I have so much from um, the last two years I got some good deals on Hobby Lobby clearance yarn and if you haven't I have one video up of that if you want to see I'll link that here but I have some thicker jumbo yarn that I'm thinking of making like a throw blanket I don't I don't know if I have enough for like a full-size blanket I don't think so but maybe like a throw now, let's see, two years ago, I think it was about two years ago, I ended up getting this yarn. It's Yarn Bee Uber Luxe Calming Blue. That's the colorway. It is a six super bulky yarn, 100% acrylic, 42 yards. Um... I can't remember how many skeins I have of this, but I believe I have enough to make a small throw blanket. And it's a beautiful teal color. So I am thinking about 
making a throw blanket in this color. And then last year I picked up some other colors. Now here's another one that I can make a small throw with. It is Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek Super Bulky 70 Yards. I believe, yes, 100% low pill acrylic in the color mauve. So this is also very pretty. So I think I have enough to make a throw in that. And then I got also got Yarn Bee True Colors Super Bulky, 30 yards. And this one is actually, this one was a six weight and this is a seven weight. I have never worked with a seven weight and I only one other time worked with a six weight. Uh, I usually use fours and threes quite a bit, but I just thought this was beautiful. 100% acrylic yarn. And the colorway for this is November Periwinkle. And it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, like blue, shimmery blue gray color. So, so pretty. I love this yarn. And this next one is the same yarn in just a different colorway. This is... What is the colorway? Fall Frost. And this is also beautiful. It's got a bunch of like tans and grays together. Now, all of these yarns, I believe I have enough in each colorway to make a throw blanket, I believe. I'll have to go through it and make sure. So I could make a throw blanket in one of these and I even thought I could pair up these colors in the same blanket that'd be beautiful the other thing that i'm thinking about doing is making a knitted shawl so a while back i did a video on expression fiber arts and some of the projects i had made with either their yarn or their patterns and i talked about a shawl that i really wanted to make actually let me go ahead and show you online all right, so I have Expression Fiber Arts website up here. And I'm going to show you the sh shawl pattern. Well, first of all, if you've never been on their site, if you click on shop, you can go ahead and pick a specific yarn if you're looking for worsted or DK or whatever you're looking for. They also have patterns. You can click on patterns. There's so many to choose from. But you can go through that have so many beautiful beautiful patterns and what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to do a search and the pattern i'm looking for is gradient c that's what the shawl is called so we're going to go look for that and if i remember correctly it was on this last page here so i'm going to bring you to that right here i'm going to click quick view and we'll first look at the pictures here so look at these I don't know. I find this shawl beautiful. It is so pretty. I mean, look at how the color just changes. It's gorgeous. And Shandy from Expression Fiber Arts, this is Shandy in the photos. She has a video on the, the gradient shawl and there's a story, a whole story behind it about her father, her father had passed away and she has a whole story on this. Now let's go ahead and go up to the materials. It tells you like all the materials you'll need. And then if you scroll down here, it tells you the size needle, knitting needles that you'll need. It says US size 5, 3.75 millimeter circular needles, 32 inch. And it says beginner skill level, perfect for those who are just beginning or have a knit project or have knit a project or two. Stitches and techniques include knit, pearl, and pearl stitches, color changes, and optional chart reading. So that is the shawl I'm thinking about trying to knit. Now, I it kind of makes me a little bit of a nervous wreck because I've only knitted, I've done the knit and pearl stitch. I've only knitted like scarves and well no I shouldn't say just scarves I also recently knitted um some washcloths if you watch any of my scrubby sunday videos I did knit some washcloths I'm not 100% the best at knitting 
I need a lot of practice yet. But let me show you the yarn that I'm going to be using for this. So here, it, um, Expression Fiber Arts yarn. I got this yarn, gosh, over a year ago. This yarn in the colorway is called Light Reading. It is a twisted tweed sport yarn. 42% fine merino wool, 43% superwash merino wool, 15% dongle, dongle. Hopefully I said that right. And it is 384 yards, 351 meters. I have this colorway and I have this one called Fisherman and this one called Fox. I find them gorgeous. They're all tweed. Oh, that blue is just so pretty. And I don't normally buy yellow yarns, but I do. I have been really liking honey mustard colored yarns and this is just reminds me of a honey mustard and if you look close this blue tweed has some honey mustard in there too and so does the the gray has little speckles of it so I find these three colors would really make a beautiful show and I wanted to find colors that kind of also reminded me of my father um, both my mother and father passed away a while back but I thought I would find some colors that kind of remind me of my dad because Shandy, she made it to remind her of her father. So I thought it would be really cool. So it's a project I do want to work on. I'm, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to tackle it this year or, or soon or wait a while yet. <laughs> I kind of have been putting it off because I'm nervous. Um, and if you guys know anything about knitting needles... You know how it said, uh, US size 5, 3.75 millimeters. I don't know much about knitting needle sizes, so I don't know. Will it say both a size 5 and a 3.75 millimeter on the knitting needle? Either way, I'm going to do some research and I'm going to try and make sure I find the right knitting needle because I do not have that size. And I'm guessing the 32 inches is the size, the length of the cord that's needed. I have so much to learn. Also, when I looked at the pattern for that, it's a little bit overwhelming because I don't know how to read a knitting pattern. So I'm going to watch her video on how to knit it. But I also need to try and learn how to read a knit, knitting pattern. So... If you have any ideas on how to learn how to read them, let me know. Maybe I need to do a YouTube search. Anyway, so your opinion, your opinion. Do you guys think I should give this a shot right now and try and learn how to knit this up? Or should I work on making a simple throw blanket with one of these colors. I can't decide, so let me know in the comments what you think. Or if you have something else in mind, I have so much yarn, I, I just wanna start another project, so I have a couple to switch off from. Also, let me know in the comments what you're working on. I really love to hear what you guys are working on. I just love hearing and seeing anything yarn and crochet or knit related. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.